This is the Sony TN1, which I reviewed recently, and this is a smaller sister, the Sony TAE1. The TAN1 is an impressive amp from 1999. Unfortunately, she hasn't got what I'm looking for in an amplifier, the warm and sweet sound. That makes me wonder if this little preamp can outperform, let's say, the brilliant Yamaha C1 from Middle Ages. I said most of it in the first part already. Sony released this pair in 1999. Both of these are quite rare, about 101 units has been produced and it's probably around 200 for the E1. As you may imagine, they were not cheap. The TAN1 cost in 1999 900,000 yen or 7,400 US dollars. And if you can trust these inflation calculators, which I don't very much, it would be about 14,000 today. The E1 cost a bit less, 600,000 yen. Before I got these two monsters, I always thought they would fit perfectly on top of each other, that they would complement each other. I was sort of mistaken. If I place the preamp up front so the front panels line up, it looks bad. The E1 is a tad narrower and shorter. Like this, the front panel is a bit wider, so I reckon they weren't meant to be like this. If I move her a bit back so that the front panel lines up with the heat sinks of the amplifier, it fits a bit better, but it's still not very good. I thought these scoot parts could line up when placed properly, but as you can see the angle is different and it still doesn't feel right. So let's move it even more back to this bit where the lid ends, and it's still not good. I have no idea how this bloody thing should be placed here. It probably looks best when the front panel lines up with the heat sinks, so I'll leave it like this. Apart from this, the TAE1 is one of the most gorgeous preamps I've ever laid my eyes on, and when you pair these two together, it certainly doesn't take away the appeal. A brilliant craftsmanship inside and out. Just pressing the power button is quite satisfying, then I have to wait for a relay to click and I can start listening. Standard procedure. These two massive knobs, unlike the chassis, are made of brass, and they feel so good when turning, so it makes me want to turn them even if I don't have to. The volume knobs got lots of physical resistance, so you literally can't turn it quickly. Also, it uses conductive plastic resistor, with very low electrical resistance. State of the art, piece of the time. The selector can be turned quickly, it snaps perfectly into a position. Again, it feels somehow satisfying. She's got all the usual inputs, two tape inputs, balanced line, SACD, CD, and two unbalanced lines. All of them with the same specs, except for the balanced line of course. These three buttons are pretty much self-explanatory. When you press the direct button, it bypasses every other input and uses just the direct input. Having a look at the back panel, you can see input connectors for the selector and of course two outputs, balanced and unbalanced. What I love about newer electronics is this type of connector for computer power cord. All the connectors are very sturdy and very high quality. What you may have also noticed is the back panel is made of copper, it's the same as in the N1 case. As well as the TAN1, the TAE1 is no feather, it weighs 21.5 kilos or 47.5 pounds. The TAN1 is a paragon of a build quality, I didn't expect anything else from the TAE1. Let's have a gander at how it looks inside then. At first sight, there's not much going on inside, but that doesn't mean it's any less interesting. Sony didn't use ordinary PCB for mounting components, but a metal substrate made of aluminium alloy, which is an excellent thermoconductor. You can think of it as a very effective and clever heatsink. As you can see, the E1 is split into two parts, the preamp part and the power supply to ensure the power supply won't interfere in a signal. Unlike the N1, which has these large heatsinks, the E1 doesn't need any, apparently. Even the chassis is a lot thinner. As you'll probably know, a power amplifier amplifies a signal and sends it to loudspeakers. A preamplifier's task is to provide volume control for a power amplifier and not cock up the signal in any way. It may additionally provide treble or bass control and more inputs, for instance, for a CD transport, turntable, tuner, etc. Does the E1 cook up the signal then? Well, Sony made sure it wouldn't happen. For instance, they used newly developed linear phase circuit, which has very low attenuation in high frequencies, about 5 decibels. For this test, I'm gonna use lovely, brilliant, infinite IRS Sigma loudspeakers. 
first I've connected the TAE1 to the Sony TAN7, which is my daily driver these days. They're not exactly compatible in looks and size. Thanks to the shape of the N7, I can't put the E1 on top, and the other way around, it looks weird. Anyhow, the sound. The sound is exactly the same, with or without the TAE1. I didn't register any change. It's not worse, and it's not better. It's just the same. Now, let's pair her with the TAN1. The TAN1 is a standalone power amplifier. She's super detailed, but compared to the N7, a bit colder and harsher in high frequencies, and not as sweet sounding. So, when I connected the E1 to the N1, which were made for each other, the sound is, again, exactly the same. Absolutely no difference whatsoever. Of course, I tried to connect them through an XLR as well as RCA. Well, I expected a bit more from the Sony's last ultra high end preamplifier. To be honest, I reckon it's just a very pretty input switcher and volume controller, so if you need a preamp for the N1 and you're not too hung up on aesthetics, I'd look somewhere else. And that's all I've got for you today. See you in the comments. Cheerio.